Uh, time now for a round of dating in the DMV, and today we're tackling the often difficult transition of dating after heartbreak. We've all been there from divorces as well as just breakups. We've all been there. So here to help us step to re-entering the dating scene a little bit easier is author, podcaster, and divorce coach, Sara Davison. Sara, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having Hello. me. And you are wearing that suit, girlfriend. I'm just going <laughs> to say her. the obvious. Right here. <laughs> all the way from London. Yeah. Yes, well, thank you, especially yeah. for being here today. Uh, before we get into your recommendations and your tips, talk about how it's so difficult for so many of us to move on yeah. after that sort of uh, division. It is really tough. So if anyone's listening in and going through it, please know that's super normal if you're struggling. Yeah, you know, heartbreak is known as the second most traumatic life experience we go through in life after death of a loved one. So of course you've got to go through that grieving cycle and it mimics very much the process that you go through after you lose someone you love. So it is a really difficult process, but there are lots of things you can do to speed it up and take your power back, and that's what I talk about. Okay, well let's get into Bring it. Let's start the first here. one. Yeah, so you want me to talk about how to get over the heartbreak? The first thing I would say is stop telling your sad story. And I'm, <laughs> we all do it, so mm -hmm. I understand that you know it's a normal, natural thing to do. But it keeps us stuck. The more we talk about the pain and what happened, and the more we tell everybody we know in our life, you know, the hairdresser, the family, the friends are all guilty of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, because friends want to know they can. Or the nail tech. Yes, yes the that's nail my tech. story. Yeah, yeah. In fact, lots of them come and train with me to become coaches because they say, yeah. you know what, I'm doing it anyway, so why don't I learn? Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So, But swapping that story for something more empowering about some of the good things you're going to be doing that are different so that your friends can still support you, mm -hmm. but it's not on the negative, oh, he's done this, she's done that. It's more of, look what I'm doing now with my life. So mm -hmm. very much taking your power back. Oh, I love that. You also that. encourage people to take it at your own pace. Yeah, absolutely. You know, some people are going to be able to manage stress and this kind of breakup stress a lot e more easily than other people. So what we want to do is, is go at your own pace so you feel comfortable, but also keep moving. We don't want to stop. If you stop, there's a problem. So we need to keep you moving and focusing on small steps that will keep you going in the direction you want to go. And how do you set that in terms of boundaries? Because that's a really important perspective of this. Yeah, you definitely need to set boundaries on. If you're looking to date again, and I know some people will be thinking it's too soon, but if you are looking at that we've really got to do the work to understand what is acceptable behavior for you in a relationship what won't you tolerate anymore we need to learn the lessons from the past so we don't keep repeating them over and over again you know there's a meme going around and people are laughing and talk about it but I think it's, it's very real and it says it's it's to women but I think it applies to men as well whatever your list is for the person you want be that, yeah. be your list. Yeah. Can you oh. talk about dating yourself essentially before bringing another person into the picture? I think it's about not looking for someone else to fill the gaps in you, right? Oh. And also we can't look to the person that just hurt us to heal us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say that again. <laughs> we can't look to the person that hurt us to heal us. That's it. The only person that can do it is yourself, right? So a lot of people say, I need to go back to my ex because I need closure. I need to find out why they don't want me anymore. But actually, the closure was them not respecting you, not showing up for you, not being kind to you, not keeping your heart safe. All those things that that individual did, that is your closure. So you need to own that and take that yourself, not rely on them to give that to you. We have about 30 seconds now say you've set up the date you're ready to go into this uncharted territory once again what should you do I always suggest have a video call first. I don't know if you've been okay. dating with someone. There's a lot of catfishing out there. Oh, so there's that's a lot good. of catfishing. Yeah. And so many clients say, I turned up and I sat there for ages and I didn't realize that that was the person I was meeting because they looked completely different. Uh -huh. So again, it's have that video call and just see, is there going to be some chemistry? Is there a connection? Are they kind? Am I safe? All those sort of things. So I definitely say have that call first. Okay, well, Sarah, thank you so much. You are just amazing. Oh, thank and you. I love that you give this information in a way that we can all receive it. Yeah. You know what I mean? From That's a very important. real place. And you can stay in touch with you at? Well, my website is saradavison.com and my Instagram, Sarah Davison Divorce Coach. Thank you, Miss Sarah.